Good morning, good morning, good morning to each of you on this magnificent Monday. I hope that you are doing well. We're here to start a brand new week. Well, a brand new week has started. We're here to start our uh, devotional supplement week. And Pastor Goodlow is here with us. Good morning, sir. How are you? Hey, good morning, good morning. I'm doing well. Thank you. Good to be with us, be with the saints this morning. All right. All right, all right. Amen, amen. They are coming in. We want to give you a chance to get in and get settled. Once you're there, press your like button, press your share button. Let others know that you're joining with us this morning. Uh, we're going to get right to our welcome here in just a second, but we hope that you had an awesome weekend. Um, we did as well. Um, we had a very, very, very good time in the Lord on Sabbath. Uh, I'll let Pastor Goodlow share more about that later on. Uh, but we're thankful that you're joining us again for our devotional supplement very quickly. If you are someone you know uh, wants to partner with our church family, please have them message us in our Facebook Messenger app. Um, we will get in, we'll follow up with you from there. Uh, but let's go ahead and get to our friends and family that are joining us for our welcome at this time. And um, we're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time today. Pastor Goodlow. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning on this magnificent Monday. Good morning. I see Coach K. Powell look like first online. Sister B.J. Ashby, uh, Charleston, South Carolina. All right, Elder and Sister John. Glad tidings. Brother David Yates. All right, my cousin K. Huntsville, Alabama. Sister Stephanie Francois. Sister Veronica Dixon. Sister Virginia Hodges, Las Vegas, Veronica Dixon, Mobile, Alabama. All right, Cynthia Young, Mobile, Alabama. And uh, Renee Dabney, Renee Dabney, Las Vegas. All right, Sister Dale Marie Simeon. All right, Sister Mary Wells, Las Vegas. Sister Janie Lewis, Las Vegas. All right, Brother Herman and Yvonne Custer. <clears throat> All right, while you're coming in, those who've gotten on early with us this morning, if you could push your share button, your like button. All right, we have my sister, Pat Carnegie, DC. My cousin, Betty Davis Harris. Huntsville, Alabama, Sister Elaine Davis. All right, West Bank. All right, Brother Phil West, Los Angeles, California. All right, we hope all is well where you are. Hope you're having a beautiful day today so far. As we start this Monday, Magnificent Monday. All right, we got Ramona Harness. All right, Faithful Dove, Lafayette, Louisiana, Sister Sandra Smith. Oh, Sister Sandra Smith's birthday today, May 1st. All right, all right. Congratulations and happy birthday. We'll give another. All right, all right. Praise God. All right, my sister Liz Lockhart, Lawton, Oklahoma. Sister Javelin. All right, sister Latrice Michaela. All right, anyone else uh, celebrating birthday today, please put it in the chat box. You celebrate birthday this week. Put it in the chat box so we can give you a shout out. All right, we got Pastor Benjamin Francois. Glad tidings. All right, okay, Brother Phil West, his birthday is this Fitness Friday. Well, it'll be May 5th. Praise God. Praise God. All right, Elder Lois McGee. Sharon Wegar, Sister Wegar, First Lady of Berin in Baton Rouge. 
All right, Sister We God, good to have you this morning. Make sure you tell Pastor We God we said hello. All right, got Tony Thomas Peterson, Las Vegas. Sister Marie Clay. All right, we got Sister Murder Wimper. Somebody's making noise. Can everybody mute their phone, please? Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. <laughs> All right, Sister Latrice is giving a birthday wish to Sister Sandra Smith. All right. Okay, well, we're going to get ready to get started. Our prayer line family is here with us this morning. Good morning to those who are on the prayer line. All right. Hope all is well with you. All right, and we pray that all had a sanctified Sabbath, a soul for Sunday. And you're ready and excited about what God's going to do for you to, on this magnificent Monday. We serve a magnificent God. So um, before we get started, we want to wish uh, Sister Sandra Smith a happy birthday today. Hope all is well with her. Hope she have a blessed birthday. And we do have a few prayer requests. All right. I see we have Brother Brian Booker joined us and Sister Penny Douglas Wilson, Huntsville, Alabama. Join us as we got started, so we want to welcome them. Uh, we have a few prayer requests we want to keep in mind. Uh, uh, we want to pray for the Singleton family, uh, their son, Victor, passed away. The funeral will be Monday, May 8th, Monday, May 8th at 11 a.m. in Arlington, Texas. And we also want to keep the Cox family, Sister Mabel Cox, who passed away. Her funeral will be this coming Sunday, May the 7th at 11 a.m. at the Caffin Church. And then we want to remember Pastor Bird and his family, the Hammond family, uh, his cousin, uh, Ebony Hammond Lahane, uh, passed away. And I believe the funeral is going to be next week. We don't have the funeral details, but when we get that, we will give it to you. Uh, but keep that family in prayer. And if I'm not mistaken, the funeral would be in Huntsville, Alabama, probably at Oakwood University. So we want to keep those families in prayer. All right, S Sister Cynthia Young is saying, pray for Jennifer Davis Yates and Robert Ballon. I think it's Ballon. The E. Please uh, mute your phone. There's a clicking. We hear something. So of Jennifer Davis Yates and Robert. Where is it? Jennifer Yates Davis I'm just going to. Okay. I don't know. I don't know where this clicking is coming from. All right. All right, so let's uh, let's uh, assume our posture of prayer as my wife lead us in our prayer time. Okay, there's a clicking on our prayer line. Now, I want to ask each prayer person to mute your phone. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, good morning to uh, again to our prayer line and um, to our Facebook Live and to YouTube. Good morning. Uh, let us pray. Father God, we want to thank you so much for allowing us to see yet another day on this magnificent Monday, Lord. And we thank you to be able to serve a magnificent God. We ask that you be with each family that are uh, experiencing bereavement. We think of the Singleton family, the Cox family, the Bird family, uh, and my family, Lord, uh, the Garth and Orr family, which uh, we are experiencing death as well. And Lord, we ask that you send your medical angel, your your uh, healing angels to assist the ones that are dealing with any type of medical issues, Lord. We think of us, Sister Jennifer uh, Yates Davis, Lord. We thank you for... Uh, her and her family, we ask that you touch her body, Lord, and anyone that's uh, attending her. We thank you, Lord, for 
my husband, my pastor, my friend, as we, as he comes forth with us with, with the word of God. And we thank you for that. And all of the people that are assisting, we think of uh, Elder Woods and uh, Elder uh, Pastor Francois and the other pastors in the area. And Lord, we just want to thank you for the harvest that we received over the weekend, 112 souls. And I ask that you continue to be with each and every one of them, fill them with your spirit. And as you fill them, prepare us so that we can receive and nurture and, and do the things that we do need to do for this new harvest, Lord. And now we ask that our hearts be open for your word this morning, we pray. Forgive us for anything that we have fallen short in and we would not be careful. We will give you all the praise, honor, and glory. For we ask it all in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you for the prayer. Praise God, praise God. And uh, yeah, I didn't mention, but yeah, the Lord blessed us with 100 plus souls that were baptized and there are others to come. We just thank God for those and we want you to be lifting up our new, uh, newly baptized members into the household of faith. And let's do all we can. Uh, Dr. Bird was saying, keep the people, keep the people. Show love, show love, support, uh, pray, uh, build relationships, uh, connect with the people, do what you can to let the people know we're glad to have them with us. All right, I see while my wife was praying, we had Sister Gail Brown, Sister Janie Lewis, and Sister Deborah Smith join us this morning uh, during that time, Sister Phyllis Wise. So welcome, welcome. All right, uh, on this magnificent Monday, can you just cut your volume down? If I do, if I cut my volume, it'll, it'll take away from I don't think so. Okay. okay. All right. So again, this morning, uh, we are going to kind of pick up where we left off last week. Last week, we were talking about Christ, our obedience. And we want to make it clear that uh, uh, exactly what the intent of the presentation was about. It was talking about Christ, our obedience. And we're talking about um, his righteousness his obedience, and how we're not saved by our works. We're not saved by our works. We're not saved by our obedience. But let me say this. Just because we're not saved by our works doesn't mean that God doesn't expect for our lives to produce some works or obedience in us. But we're just saying we want to make sure we don't get caught up in my works. I'm saved by what I do. I'm saved by my obedience. You're not saved by your obedience. We said that the root of your salvation is your faith and your confidence, your belief, your acceptance of the perfect, righteous life and works of Jesus Christ. That's the root of your faith your root of your salvation. That's the root, the root, the foundation, the ground. That's where it starts. But as you grow in your faith and in your belief, your life will begin to produce fruit and it will produce the fruit of obedience. In other words, God will transform your life. God will change you. And the things you used to do because of the indwelling and empowering and infilling and indwelling uh, 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 of the Holy Spirit in life, God will bring about a transformation in your life. Transformation. Let me go to the text. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And I want to start at verse 9. Verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. It says, Now know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the uh, infeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, 
nor cowards, not, uh, not cowards, drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. God says those people who are practicing, those people who are living in open sin and, and, and intentional sin, uh, those individuals will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. But then it goes on to say, and such, verse 11, and such were some of you. But the difference is you have been washed, you have been sanctified, and you have been justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. So God is saying a person, let, let, well, let me go to my, my, my script here. It says not everyone that talks about heaven is going there. And the majority of people in America claim they claim to be Christian Yet it is estimated that only 40% attend church regularly. What Paul is addressing in there uh, in, to the Corinthians, Paul is writing to the church that, it, that was marked by some de de definite sin problems. And he addresses their pride and divisiveness in the first four chapters of Corinthians. He writes to let them know how to correct the problem of a man living in sin, and then he instructs them not to take each other to court over civil matters in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. In the last chapter, uh, last part of chapter 6, Paul is letting them know that immorality is wrong. Im immorality is wrong. He said, do not be deceived. Every genuine Christian will be transformed into the image of Christ. Paul starts by sharing, the, uh, sharing uh, about those who will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. He said, those who are not going to heaven, or, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Then he lists some things. Uh, the, and the unrighteous are unsaved, and they are not going to heaven. An unrighteous person, is one whose life is clearly characterized by sin. In other words, an unrighteous person is a person who's not even, have no desire to be changed, no desire to live for God, no desire for God to transform their lives. That's an unrighteous person. A right unrighteous person is a person who says, I want to have anything to do with God, and I don't want God interfering in my life. I don't want God uh, 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 changing me or doing anything in my life. That's an unrighteous person. But Christians, as Christians, we have placed our faith in Jesus Christ and him alone. Now, as Christians, we will still mess up and make mistakes. But our lives are not characterized by sin. Uh, in other words, we're not just openly, outright, just continue to live in sin with no repentance, no change, no desire to change, no desire to be delivered. We want to be saved. We want to be delivered. And we recognize when we fall in sin that we have to take the step of confession, repentance, and turning from those sins. The Bible says... Not everyone who says that to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the ones who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. Jesus goes on to say, my sheep hear my voice, and they know them, and they follow me. Uh, in, in John 10, verse 27. See, a Christian will do the will of his Father, and a Christian will follow the Lord. As a believer, our lives will not be marked uh, by the practicing of sin, but instead will be marked by a life of righteousness. A person who hears the gospel and responds to the gospel in humble faith becomes a Christian, and then the process of becoming like Jesus Christ starts in our lives. When we respond to the gospel by faith, 
when we accept Jesus Christ, then something starts happening inside of us. And I think we mentioned last week, what happens inside of us is something that's supernatural. The supernatural working of the Holy Spirit starts working on our heart and we are be become changed. We no longer have the same nature. God is transforming our natures to a, that we will become more Christ-like. See, we need to understand there is no one that is too bad to come to Christ and have their sins forgiven. Jesus Christ saved the apostle Paul when he was Saul. And while he was Saul, before God saved him, Saul was persecuting the church, having Christians been persecuted and even put to death. But God changed him. So when Saul was changed and converted, he stopped fighting against God and started working with God and for God and allowing God to use him. And that's what happens when a person is saved. When you're saved, you don't continue to practice the same evil, ungodly, unchristlike behavior. You don't continue to practice that. You don't continue to do those things. Those things become an abomination to you. Uh, you begin to hate those things that you used to love to do because God is putting a spirit of enmity in your heart and in your spirit where you have a, a, a dislike for those things that you used to like, you used to enjoy, you used to willingly do, you no longer willingly, voluntarily do those things. So, so we need to understand that at the moment of salvation, when we're saved, we are washed by the blood of Jesus, we're sanctified by the Holy Spirit, and we are justified by the sacrifice that Jesus Christ paid for our sins. And he paid the penalty of our sin, but it doesn't stop there. Once we're saved, then we must be transformed where we are changed. And when we're changed, we become more and more like Jesus Christ. So the more you become like Jesus Christ, the less you will live the way you lived before you knew Jesus Christ. In other words, you won't keep on doing the same things. And now, now, let me say this. And it's not because God does not have the power, Jesus doesn't have the power. There are some things, some lifestyles, and some habits that have been formed that takes, sometimes it takes time for people to change. And, but it's not because Jesus does not have the power to change us. Sometimes we lack the faith to believe that he can change us. I want you to know Jesus can transform your life. Jesus can deliver you from certain habits and addictions that you are addicted to. Jesus can set you free from those things. He has the power, but we have to have the faith to believe and we have to have the faith to walk in victory that God will give us and has given us. But sometimes, because of our lack of faith, it takes time for the change to be made in our lives. But we know that we have been changed day by day, hour by hour, we're being changed. The Bible says, by beholding, Jesus Christ, we become changed. Let me give you three things that is very clear in this text and, 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 and some things that we need to make application. First of all, our behavior is not the reason for our salvation, but our behavior reveals that we have been saved. In other words, your salvation comes first. And after your salvation, after you are saved, then your behavior become different. You are changed first. You are saved first. And then the change takes place. 
I think about, oftentimes I think about uh, the thief on the cross. What did he do in order to be saved? He didn't do anything except believe that Jesus Christ had the power to save him. He said, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. That was his faith. He said, I believe you got power to save me. I believe you got a heaven and you got the authority to allow me to be saved in your kingdom. The thief was saved on the cross fresh out of a sinful lifestyle. Had no change been made in his life. He had been living a life of sin, but on the cross, he asked Jesus to give him eternal life. And Jesus Christ saved the thief. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. So the thief could not have been saved based on his behavior. So that's what we're trying to make clear. We're not saved by our behavior, but when we are saved, our behavior will change. So there are three things. The th first thing, our behavior is not the reason for our salvation. Jesus Christ is the reason for our salvation. But when we're saved, we will, our behavior will be changed. All right, the second thing, Christians, as Christians, we still struggle with sin. But when we are living, but when we are living in, in unrepentant sin, we will be absolutely miserable. See, we will still have some struggles with sin, with temptation, with those things in life. But if we live in unrepentant sin and we have no desire to be changed and we do not confess, we do not repent, we do not go to Jesus Christ when we fall, we will be most miserable. And there are a lot of people who are call themselves Christian but are still living in sin. And when you're still living in sin and you call yourself a Christian, that's a contradiction. And you will be miserable. You will not have the joy of the Lord. The third thing that I'd like to bring out is a believer, as believers, we must agree with God concerning our sin. God has provided a way to heaven, but not everyone talking about heaven is going there. We have to submit, we have to surrender, we have to give our lives over to Jesus Christ and allow him by the transforming power of the Holy Ghost in our lives to change our lives. And when he changed our lives, that means our lifestyle will be different from what it was before we became a child of God. So your lifestyle is an evidence of your salvation your lifestyle, the life that you live. Let me close with this text, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter, let's see, chapter two, chapter two, Ephesians chapter two. It says, verse four, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, but quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved. And he have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. For by grace, here it is again, for by grace, you are saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, least, least any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. It says it over and over again. We are saved by grace through faith. But once you're saved, because that's the gift of God, your salvation is the gift of God.
but it says, it's not of works, least any man should boast. But then it goes on and tells, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So we are saved, but once we're saved, God expects us to do the works of righteousness that he has ordained even before he saved us. He already ordained us to do the good works that he created us for. So again, my brothers and sisters, we're saved based on Jesus Christ and his righteousness and what he has done, what he is doing. But once we're saved, God expects when the change take place in our lives that we will be obedient to him and walk in his perfect will and live according to his word that he has given us. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Um, as I was listening to the um, this, um, topic this morning, uh, what came to my mind was we have to, you know, when Paul said we have to die daily to self, self, we have to die daily and, and hourly by the minute, by the second, because uh, the enemy is ready to just creep in to occupy and to change our minds, you know. So we have to die daily in order to walk the, in the spirit, you know, to allow the spirit to take full control. We have to die daily to self. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for joining us this morning. And um, I, one of the things that is a part of that journey for, for us is what we term as sanctification. I think Pastor Goodlow um, have referenced it um, you, in the past and even in, in some of the details today. There is an ongoing working within us um, that is that is a part of this journey. And, as much as God is there at the beginning in our justification, he's there in our sanctification as well. And um, yeah, there there is a process um, or there, there is a space that we should arrive at where we are living a life that is consistent with, with, with what God is showing us in scripture. Yeah, we may not, we probably won't hit everything perfectly, um, but God is faithful and will empower us um, to overcome those things that are that are challenging for us. And that's good news. We, like uh, Pastor Goodlow uh, mentioned earlier and Sister Goodlow mentioned in our prayer, had a really good time on Sabbath. Um, the baptism was was a unique experience um, mm -hmm. for me as well. Um, but just definitely glad to see um, the individuals kind of kind of push through the, the chilling water of the pool um, mm -hmm. to, to be baptized and uh, like Pastor Goodlow said earlier, we're looking for we're looking for more, and um, as always, I mean we're we're sharing these messages with you Monday through Friday. Again, that's uh, what alludes to what I say said usually said at the beginning. If you or someone you know are interested in partnering with our church family, like let them know um, that they can contact us. Um, let them know about the messages that we're that we're having from day to day. And um, we can begin that Bible study, that journey with them so that they, too, um, can make their decision for Christ. So um, we're thankful for your prayers and your support for everyone that helped out for those two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and we're going to need your prayers and support moving forward um, to to grow what we've received already by God's grace. And um, yeah. Anything else, Pastor, before we close? Yes, just want to remind people, uh, mm -hmm. where do we go from here? Mm -hmm. On this coming Tuesday, yeah. this coming yeah. Tuesday, please make note of the date. Tuesday, not Wednesday, mm -hmm. but Tuesday. We will be back at the 5th African Baptist Church at 2616 or 18 Louisiana Avenue. We will be back there Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And we want to continue. The revival is going to continue. Dr. Bird will be back with us. He'll be speaking that night. Our music and praise thing will be back there. So the worship is going to continue. 
we're just kind of modifying our schedule. Instead of five nights a week, we're modifying to one night a week, and then we'll be together on Sabbath, this coming Sabbath, and Dr. Barry will be back on this coming Sabbath, and he will be our speaker for this coming Sabbath. So he'll be with us Tuesday night at 7 p.m., be back with us Sabbath morning at 11 a.m. So let's make sure we keep this, uh, the spirit of revival fresh and alive and keep the fire burning. Let's not just get go back to business as usual. God has moved. We baptized 111 souls and look forward to even more. It might be, I'm not sure the exact number. Some say 111, some say 112. Yeah. But we baptized quite a few, mm -hmm. quite a few individuals. So we want to do all we can to keep this fire, keep this revival going. So all of our churches be back in the same location this coming Tuesday. So spread the word, spread the word and invite others out so they can be blessed. Amen. 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 Let's pray at this time. Father in heaven, we pause again to say thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for uh, the message that was shared this morning um, in, in the principle of obedience and uh, the Savior's role um, in it for us. We are reminded that we're saved by grace through faith, um, and as a result of, of being saved, we, we live lives that are um, reflective of what God has done and is doing in our lives. So, God, we thank you again for the principle of that's being shared in your word. And we pray that we apply it to our lives and share it with others as well. Um, again, we want to lift up the prayer requests that were mentioned <laughs> earlier. Um, broadly speaking, those that are dealing with financial challenges, physical challenges, spiritual challenges, um, psychological challenges, any concerns that are on the hearts and minds of your people, we lift them up to you. Uh, we're thankful for what you've done um, through Pastor Bird and his team and through the ministry leaders and uh, the Bible workers and everyone that was involved during the Good News Revival. We're thankful for the souls that were baptized. Now, God, we're praying that um, we come alongside them and support them and nurture them um, so, they can, so that they can continue um, their walk with you in a very marked and positive way. Um, give us the resources that we need. Uh, give us all that um, is needed to nurture um, their walk. And we pray that the revival was encouraging for us who have already made you our Lord and Savior as well as we um, move forward. May we live uh, the principles that were shared and become uh, the men and women that you've called us to be. We're thankful for the leaders, um, everyone that's been involved. We're thankful for those that were able to tune in today. Uh, we pray that we draw closer to you Ultimately, we pray that we share these messages of your soon coming with others so that they too can see you in peace when you come. Father, again, we thank you for all that you've done as we leave this place. Watch over us and keep us safe today. We're thankful for the gift of salvation and we pray that we see you in peace when you come. Your son's strong name, we pray. Amen. Pastor, yeah, I think you're muted, Pastor. All right, all right, saints. Be blessed and be a blessing to somebody else. And we look forward to seeing you on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Amen.